Fund Supermont, your online gateway to unit trusts. The EM debt asset class has been performing well this year. Do you think the rally will continue? As we look across the world of emerging markets, we're, we're quite constructive on the asset class. And, and we say that from perspective of, of hard currency sovereigns, local currency sovereigns, and emerging market corporates. Um, you know, key factors that, that we derive encouragement from at the moment, um, we think that the, the period sort of dollar strengthening has largely played out. And, and we don't see any immediate reasons for dollar strength to, to sort of reemerge and, and to sort of be a pressure point. Um, we sort of looking across things like the commodity cycle, uh, we sort of see that in 2017, you know, key commodities are generally sort of at, at levels that are higher than they were for the, the course of 2016. So, th so this is a fundamental uh, um, positive. You know, if, if we look, say, across Asia, you know, we've seen sort of the Chinese recovery and, and growth is translating to exports across the region being stronger. Um, and if we look across the EM corporate space um, in particular, we, you know, we see other positive fundamental we see that, that earnings are rising across, if, if we look at the MSCI equity index, uh, we see that, you know, that, that revenue growth in EM is, is above that of, of most developed market equity indices. We see that the ratio of, uh, of rising stars is, uh, to, to fallen angels is, is the most positive it's been in five years. Um, so we, we are quite positive. We, as, as we look across the asset class, we continue to, to expect positive returns to continue. The EM corporate debt market size has been increasing constantly in the last five years. What's the main drive behind the growth of this asset class? Yeah, so if, if we look at the growth of the emerging market corporate space, um, it, it really I like to divide it in sort of into into two periods. For the first half of this decade, we did have very dramatic growth as, as you know the the universe of EM corporate debt stock rose from roughly 700 billion to over 1.6 trillion, uh, sort of the 2010 to 2014 time period. Um, very very significant growth. But since then, we've actually seen that growth moderate, um, especially if you look at you know the very big difference we draw between um, gross issuance figures and net issuance figures. And the uh, difference being, obviously, companies that raise debt to refinance existing debt without adding to the total debt stock. We, you know, ultimately, this is generally a, a positive for, for the companies issuing that debt as, as they're pushing out maturities and potentially um, locking in lower cost of borrowing. Um, so we think of this as being quite constructive and, and quite positive. Within the EM corporate debt universe, where do you see the best investment opportunities currently? So we at Aberdeen are fundamentally speaking, we are we are bottom up investors. Um, you know, when when we make investment decisions, we do so on the basis of, of detailed fundamental research into each individual investment um, position we take. Uh, so you know, that said, you know, probably some some key themes worth highlighting um, are. One, we, you know, one of our consistent themes where, where we find investment opportunity is, is uh, in, in sort of smaller countries and countries which, which have uh, sovereign rating ceilings issues. And that is, you know, we're, we, you know we, we like to find companies that have very strong balance sheets, very strong business models, but have depressed credit ratings because they may be located in a country with, with a low credit rating at, at the sovereign level. Um, so this is one of the key themes and, and one of the places where we consistently generate alpha uh, from investments in, in sort of that meet this kind of, of, of criteria. Um, more recently, uh, sort of looking at it just from a strictly top-down perspective, you know, we've noticed that, that the double B space in emerging market corporates is particularly seems to have cheapened up and, and offer some compelling, uh, compelling opportunity. You know, if, if you look sort of back over, or, you know, over the historical spread premium over, over uh, U.S. double Bs, that's generally averaged to be about 100 basis points. And, and, and unlike many other pockets of, of sort of assets, we're actually back to that sort, of, that sort of trading level, that opportunity. If you look at it in percentage terms, it's, it's actually, you know, we're above that sort of three, three and a half year average. So, uh, you know, we, we find that space attractive. Now, wh why is that the case? Well, uh, about 50% of the debt stock that is double B emerging market corporates actually comes from three countries. It's, it's Brazil, Russia, and Turkey. And we are quite constructive on all three stories. So it's, I guess it's no coincidence that, that we uh, are overweight all three. When selecting EM corporate bonds, what factors do you look at so as to minimize the default risk? 
as, as bottom-up investors, um, we again we you know, we focus on doing our, our you know our, our due diligence and our fundamental analysis, and, and that boils down to some sometimes some very simple questions, which is, do we understand how a company generates cash flow? Um, and what are potential sources of stress in that company's ability to generate cash flow? Um, so, we, you know, I think part of the answer to that question comes back to just doing your homework and understanding the investment risks you're taking in, in each position that you take. But, you know, maybe to highlight one thing in particular, um, we, we ensure we, we keep a close eye on, and that is the, you know, sort of FX, uh, any FX risks sort of embedded in, in, in sort of an investment we make, you know, as, as, a, as companies that borrow in hard currency space, we want to make sure that they, you know, either naturally generate revenues and cash flows in that currency to, to avoid taking unnecessary FX risk, or that they properly hedge that risk out. Um, and that, that, that is definitely one of the focal points we look to, to, to try to avoid unnecessary defaults. During the rate hike cycle and commodity sell-off, why do EM corporate bonds have better downside risk resistance compared to EM sovereign bonds? A couple of reasons to, to, to explain why EM corporates are um, both more resilient to, to rising rates and to, to commodity price volatility. Uh, with respect to the rates element to it, 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 it the simplest explanation is, is that it's a shorter duration asset class than, than the comparative uh, hard currency sovereign space. So it, by definition, as rates rise, um, there's less pressure uh, on EM corporates to, to sell off. With respect to commodity prices, there's a few factors that, that help explain it. Um, for one, uh, you know, the EM corporate debt space is a very large and diversified universe. It's, you know, uh, we have over 50 countries in our benchmark, um, over 500 issuers, which goes up to 700 if you include sort of the off benchmark opportunities and in, in, in 100% government owned entities that we can also look to. Um, so, you know, while Oil producers may suffer from falling oil prices. You know, there are lots of companies that have absolutely no correlation to, to commodity prices falling, or which may be beneficiaries to, to lower commodity prices. So um, we benefit from that. But then within the actual commodity space, um, uh, one unique feature of emerging market corporates uh, is that we have many companies that are uh, state-owned. And this degree of state ownership generally means that these will be large, vertically integrated companies. And in, in, in the ENP space in particular, over 80% of the EM corporate bonds are issued by government-related entities. So um, these companies will generally benefit from friendly uh, government policies from, from some degree of support or protection in periods of stress. And we saw that play out during the, uh, the last commodity sell-off.